Professor Anna Vedel, Chair of the Nobel Committee. Could you describe to us what is circadian rhythm? So circadian, it derives from the Latin. So circa is around and day is day. And this is the daily rhythm we have to anticipate and adapt to the dramatically different conditions during day and night that arise from the rotation of the Earth. So the three laureates, this, uh, what problem have they solved? So it, it had been known for a long time that there are diurnal or circadian rhythms, but how it worked wasn't unknown at all. And it was debated for a long time whether it was a response to external signals or something endogenous. And uh, they, before they started their work, it was understood that it was endogenous and it was even understood that single genes could influence the circadian rhythm, but nothing was known about the mechanism. And there were different hypotheses, but they found out it, the mechanism that controls the machinery of the clock. So if we turn to the discovery, what were the key findings and who did what? Yeah. So first of all, they studied, they used the uh, fruit fly as a model system. And before their work, there had been a classic experiment uh, by Benzer and Konopka. They had used the fruit fly to ask, can you identify mutants that arise due to mutations in single genes? So that was sort of a basis before our laureates started their work. And they took advantage of that because the, the gene wasn't known, there were mutant strains known who had long or short or no rhythm at all that were known to map to the same locus. So the laureates used these flies and went on to isolate the gene and to determine what gene it was, but that didn't prove the mechanism either. So what they then did was experiments to understand the function of the system by this gene and then several others that they did in sequential experiments. Why is circadian rhythm important? Mm -hmm. So we need the circadian clock to anticipate the daily changes, not yes, only sir. adapt, but anticipate. So it's a, there are dramatically different conditions during day and night, and we need to be very active in the day, and other processes need to take place during night. And evolutionary, it's been a very great advantage to take to use the early critical light hours, uh, minutes of the day, for instance. If you're, uh, if you're hunting, you need to be active, or if you're hunted, you need to run and hide. So you need to be, be prepared and take advantage of, and uh, be one step before the, uh, the uh, environment. And that's why we need it. And um, is this sort of kind of clock, is it, is it in all our cells? Or? Well, we know that most of our cells have this clock. And we also knew, we knew before these discoveries that there is a central clock in the brain that controls the rhythm. And then uh, later it was found that we also have them in other parts of our body. But it's, the, it's actually the mechanism that the laureates have elucidated. The, it's an auto-regulatory, self-sustained, uh, inhibitory feedback loop. It's a bit complicated. Um, if you should describe um, the, this, what they found, the, the actual, uh, what they are awarded for in an accessible way, would it be is it a metaphor one could use? Or? Yes, well, of course, the clock is a metaphor, easy, but, but the mechanism is it's a little bit difficult, but it, it's an oscillator. So you build up a substance, and then when the substance is there, it turns off its own production, and then it can start over again. So it becomes an oscillation. So a negative feedback of its own synthesis. That's the best I can do. <laughs> so it's a bit like an hourglass when the lower part is full of sand and it's time to turn around? Or? Yeah, but an hourglass doesn't really shut off its own synthesis. So it's hard to find something similar, actually. So an oscillator and the mechanism for the oscillator by shutting off its own synthesis in a regulated way. So it becomes self-sustained, autonomous. Uh, also, this prize is for physiology or medicine. So, what are the medical implications? Well, uh, there are, there's a huge field of chronobiology, chronomedicine. It's really exploding. It's a fascinating area. But in humans, most 
data on specific diseases are so far correlations. So we don't really have the firm evidence to postulate that the circadian clock does this or that when it comes to disease. There are some examples. There are sleep phase disorders where you actually have mutations in the core, some of the core clock genes, and then you have a shorter or a longer phase, and that causes problems with sleep. Uh, that, that's a solid thing. But in humans, apart from that, there, there are lots of correlations. There's more known, of course, in animal models, where you can disrupt the clock and then see effects. Uh, another example is jet lag, of course, but that's not really a disease. But that indicates that when we're misaligned, so the, our inner clock does not match or is misaligned to the environmental clock, then we really feel bad. But uh, then, of course, there's a lot of interest in trying to understand if our lifestyle today with so, sort of a social jet lag has implications for disease. And that's very actively studied, but so far, mainly correlations. And sometimes you feel kind of bad when in the wintertime when you're in Sweden and the darkness. How, how should one cope? How one shall cope? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> uh, what, I, what, what I can say regarding that is that there's so many things that we need to understand. And also the, the core machinery, it's a lot more complex, but the, the concept is the same. But we now know that there are more factors regulating and stabilizing. There are interconnected loops and there are mechanisms for entrainment, so you adjust the clock, mechanisms for synchronizing clocks throughout the body, and output mechanisms, so other genes are sort of hitchhiking on the system and controlled by the same mechanism. And all of this is really, really dynamic, and we are learning so much. So although the, all of these implication questions, what it means for our health, that really remains to be to me nailed down now. And they have provided tools for that. By understanding these mechanisms, we now have a way forward to address these issues. And if we turn our attention to the laureates, uh, who are they? Three Americans. So Hall is, uh, he was born in 1945. Uh, he, he worked very closely together with Mike Rochbach. Uh, they have been working together since the mid-70s, mid and they are about the same age. My, uh, Rochbach is one year younger. Uh, Hall has retired, but Mike Rosbach is very active still. And Michael Young, he's also an American, and he worked independently. They have also had some collaborations, but he's uh, at Rockefeller University. He's also spent a very long career at Rockefeller, and he's still very active. And finally, has the Nobel Committee been able to reach any of the laureates? Yes, sir. so our Secretary General, Professor Thomas Perlman, he has reached uh, Ross Fashion Hall, but he's not been able to reach Michael Young yet. <laughs> and, and last question, what, what do you think is the best about this prize? The best about it? Well, it's such a fundamental prize. It's a detailed molecular mechanism, but it explains how we are adapted to the planet. I think it's a very fundamental thing, and it's, it's important for so many things. And it's opened so many questions and enabled so many questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.